This is the Calvin D Project, where we interview interesting people driven to change the trajectories of those they serve through learning, teaching, and writing. I want to thank you for being here. We're pleased to welcome Sanessa, a very special guest out of Rochester, Michigan. She stick around because some of the most popular content is the advice portion that's at the end. So right before we dive in, make sure you hit that subscribe button if you haven't already, and also hit that bell notification icon so that you can get more episodes like this one. So Nessa, I appreciate you for joining the Calvin D Project podcast this week. Tell me a little bit about yourself and your ministry. Hello to you. Thank you for having me. Listen, I've been out here doing this music for about, I would say about a little over 20 years. I am a servant. I love God. And what I do is I bring myself to the feet of the Lord to use me in every area that's possible. That birthed out the rapping ministry for me as being a secular artist and then coming out to actually be a gospel artist. Rapping Rise for the Kingdom. I'm excited to be here. I just want people to know that I'm here for the long haul. I am a servant and I'm after pleasing God. I'm thankful for opportunity to have platforms to be able to have different avenues to talk about the good news. You mentioned that you've been in music for a very long time. For those that are new to you, what's the backstory behind the name Sanessa? Listen, at the top of the year of 21, I changed my name to Sonessa. I had been for probably about 15 years known as rap artist Nina Cross. I needed something else, something new and something fresh, something that was more of my own. I was just trying to figure out a way to get out of the name Nina Cross, even though people love Nina Cross. Some people still call me Nina. And uh, after 15 years, it's a big deal for artists to go to a, a big rebranding like that because that's a long time to actually have a name change. And for me, Sonessa is my name in the Greek. My my name that I was born with, it, with my mother gave me is Shanisha. And so, so Nessa is just the Greek for Shanisha. And so when you're calling me So Nessa, you're actually calling me by my my real tag. It's just in another language and it has a pretty dope meaning. So I'm just like, hey, listen, if I could be full of prudence and understanding the wisdom, let's do it, you know? And so I'm excited about my, the rebranding, the change, the artistry with the So Nessa brand. And I'm just trying to introduce it to the world, repackage it to some and then introduce it to others. Now, what role did music play in your life in your early years? It's so crazy because I'm a lover of music. And growing up as a young girl in Saginaw, Michigan, my mom, she used to rap. She was like, you know, freestyling all the time around the house. And my thing was, yeah, I want to be a singer, you know, but um, God didn't bless me with that. <laughs> so, but I had no idea that as I was coming up, those things were carving out or chiseling out the rap artists. I think I started writing poetry in elementary, in the fifth grade, but I did not equate that to you know, rapping. I never even knew that I could do that until I started hanging out with a bunch of rappers and start just trying to freestyle and discover like, hey, I know how to do this, you know? Music has been a very a big thing in my life. I always like listen to a lot of artists like Tupac, he was my favorite artist. The back in the days, Jay Z's and Busta Rhymes and Ludacris and Little Kim and you know, I mean, I listen to a plethora of people. <laughs> I love music. Like I was a hip hop head, and I didn't even understand that I was actually going to tap into that place myself. I understand that you've been nominated for Voices of Gospel Music Award in three categories: New Music Artist of the Year, Gospel Hip Hop Artist of the Year and songwriter of the year. In addition to that, nominated by S&M Music Indie Awards, Best Holy Hip Hop Female Artist of the Year, Best New Artist of the Year. How do you feel when people show you the proper appreciation for your work? It's so crazy. The irony of that is like, what is a proper appreciation? I think as artists, 
we love doing what we do, most of us, it goes unnoticed a lot of the time of what you do, but you're doing it because you believe that this is something that you are called to do. And so to actually get in a place where people are recognizing, wow, you know, this is something that God is possibly on with. It's a pretty prestigious honor. And I think that one has to be humble to understand that you're going through doors that God is allowing to come open. It's not that you're so grand. It's just that the Lord is causing a light to be shining on you because you are submitted to him and you're actually going to push his agenda. So I don't know if I answered that question. I just feel like I'm thankful. But it's a humbly and an honorful place to be in as an artist. Of your songs, which one of your songs do you love to perform the most? Wow. I would have to say it's one that I haven't even put out. I performed it a couple times. It's called Speak and Live. Hopefully that'll be a, something that you'll get on the backdrop, you know, it's coming. Speak and Live is really a, for me, it's a very powerful song because it is educating people on what they're speaking. We as human beings have to understand that we have power in our mouth. It's imperative to know that we need to speak life when I get out there and I talk about speak and live, you know, speak it to your life, you gotta live. This is a new life that we gotta live. It's always a powerful place to be in, especially when the song is over and I'm able to encourage people through whatever God has given me prophetically. And so that's a powerful moment for me. What comes to mind for you when you hear the word faith? Uh, what does that word mean to you? Wow. Faith is an opportunity to be pleasing unto God. Faith is, it is the glue of who we are. We cannot be Christians or be children of God without having faith because we have to actually have faith that He is what He says. We have to believe, you know, faith is the place that puts us in the right standing with God. In order to have God, we have to have faith that He is God. No believer can be pleasing to him. No believer can actually be a believer without faith. And so faith is an instrument that we need and that's necessary for us to maintain our kingdomship. Would you consider yourself a stop and smell the roses kind of person? Or would you consider yourself a person that is always moving on to the next project? Wow, I think I do a little bit of both. <laughs> so okay, just, it's not to be complicated. I'm sorry. <laughs> I am an analytical person. I, I, I'm a thinker. I am a steward of wisdom. I want to know what's going on. I, I, I like to understand the backdrop of things. And then at the same time, I'm a go-getter and I'm an entrepreneur. With that being said, while I'm figuring things out, I want to expand, I want to grow, and I want to make sure that I'm keeping it moving. You know, I'm not a slackful person. I like to like yeah, get things done. So I think I do both. I think I take some time to reflect. I take some time to look at things, but also be like, yo, let's go, let's go, let's go. Let's get it done. So I kind of like both. <laughs> you also minister. Now a good artist has a unique ability to make observations and find the art in shared experiences. How have you been able to find a way to miss ministry and music? Wow, I would have to helpfully say, God, it's the only way because I can't do any of this stuff on my own. The Lord, a long time ago, uh, he really commissioned me to get rid of all the secular things. And when he did, he filled me up with things from the kingdom. It's always an opportunity to minister. A lot of people, if you're not reading the Bible, you would know, but those who are reading the Bible, and even if they're not, you listen to scriptures all day long through my music because my music is laced with scriptures. So it's just how God gives it to me. So I use the platform of, of, of rhyming to actually allow people to get acquainted with the word through the music. But also there's another line where I'm actually going beyond the scene and I actually preach as well. So I'm not just a rapper. I also do minister the word as well. What new projects are you working on that you're able to share with us at this time? <laughs> I hope to bring EP coming soon. 
haven't had a finalized date on that with my team yet, um, but I'm hoping to, um, we're kind of like playing around with if we're going to provide you all with a new single or if we're going to just hit you with an EP. So that's something that I can safely say that is coming down the pipeline real soon, I hope. There's some other things that I'm doing that I <laughs> can't really talk about right now, but there's other things that are coming um, out of the umbrella of Sonessa, and I'm just encourage you guys to just come on on this journey with me, and, and you know, my story is coming uh, for masses to hear, uh, Lord willing. I'm just excited about allowing God to just use me and continue to build the platform that He is, he is um, putting before me. What advice would you like to give or what would you say is the best advice you've ever received? My dad told me a long time ago, probably in 2009, to get out your own way. That probably, I know for sure, had been the best advice for me, even though when he spoke it to me, it was kind of over my head. And I didn't understand what he was really saying to me until I got a little bit older, a little bit wiser, and I went through a lot of trials and tribulations to understand that it's imperative for us not to be a stumbling block or a hindrance for ourselves. In order to get to the place that God has called us, it is uh, when we actually get in the back seat or get in the passenger seat and make sure that God is the driver to take us to those different places because sometimes we're our worst enemy. So if I was going to give any advice to the listeners, I would tell you not to be your worst enemy, not to be the stumbling block or the hindrance for you being derailed from your purpose, your assignment, and your destiny. Just get out your own way. Tell me a little bit about Outpour with Pastor Cool. Wow, so Outpour is my baby. <laughs> Outpour is my company, actually. And uh, a long while ago, I tried to pass on this name to another ministry that I belong to for outreach. And Lord, in 2020, told me to start a business. You know, like one month before, before COVID came, I was like, okay, God, like, what do you want me to call it? You know, he's like, I'll pour. And I'm like, I'm going to sell that to people. <laughs> this is my conversation with God. I'm just be honest, you know, just like, okay, Lord, what is it? Like, what is this? You know, and even when he told me to give it, give it to me, he gave me the message statement. And it's kind of this as um, Outpour is a revival, Outpour Global is a movement. It's, it's bringing restoration to the body, mental vigor, support, and success. Outpour is a revival. It is a movement with different branches. And so Outpour with Pastor Cooper is a, a teaching uh, platform, of course. And uh, it's something that the Lord had me to, to launch last year. I sat it down after I launched it. I did a couple episodes and sat down for a minute because I had some some um, some pressing things sitting in front of me that I needed to figure out in my life at the time. And so the Lord was like, okay, now after you to fast, you didn't pray, you did all this, it's time for you to get back to this, you know? And so now this is my third week with Outpour on my platform. I'm hosting it with uh, StreamYard. And so it's on live with uh, uh, Facebook and also Facebook, YouTube. Also my, my business page, Outpour page, it's it comes on live and so it's just a place where you can get fat and full and we chop it up we break down the word and we just kind of like we pray and uh it's just a place to be engaged enlightened and uh revived and for my audience that wants to connect with you how do we find you okay so uh for those of you that would like to connect with me i would direct your traffic to my my website that's outpourglobal.com you can find me there i have my sonessa artistry where there's booking um also have some music up there and it's about me there to, to explain people that are coming uh, onto the platform to know who i am as a rapper just a little synopsis about that and then i also have a pastor tab with pastor cooper and so it's also a, a place where you can connect with me as on that page as well and so that's outpour global and also i am sonessa cooper on all platforms you can find me, Sonis, on YouTube, Sonis Cooper on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. Everything is Sonessa Cooper. I would love to reach out to you. Uh, those are platforms you can find me on. And um, I do like to try and direct the traffic to my page, of course, my website. Oh, in order to buy music, I have two songs up there for purchase, uh, King Jesus and um, Live for Christ. Uh, I encourage everyone to check Sonis out. And for those that have not done already please hit that subscribe button if you haven't already and hit that bell notification icon so that you can get more episodes like this one and i want to thank you again for listening to the calvin d project